to Reclaim You. Today we're talking with Emily about body image and body dysmorphia. Really excited for this conversation. How are you doing, Emily? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Excited to chat about all of yeah, this. I was excited to talk about body image and how we can work on body image. When I was thinking of this, I, I knew that you'd be game for yeah. talking about all of the things and really getting curious about all like what goes into it. Totally. Yeah. What do you feel like got you interested in? Well, I think we talked about this in your Meet Emily video. Tell us more about your interest in working with, with body image, um, self-image, all that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that really comes from my own personal experience and journey with body image. That was something, you know, growing up. And I think like big, a big factor in, in kind of how we develop body image is diet culture and kind of our exposure mm -hmm. to diet culture, our exposure to media. Um, so that was always something that was really a struggle for me. Like I would, mm -hmm. you know, see all these celebrities and like people I looked up to and it was like, oh, like they look like this, like I should look like this. Mm -hmm. And I would hear how their bodies were talked about and like, this is good, this is bad. And that was kind of how I formed my own body image. And it was really, really mm -hmm. hard because it was kind of set against these very, very impossible, unrealistic standards. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until, you know, I graduated college was like in my early twenties that I was kind of introduced to this other idea that sure, like body image is typically focused on the physical, but like when we bring in these kind of more innate qualities and values, it, it helps so much with body image. Like it, it really yeah. just kind of redefined, like I am so much more than my body. It's not yeah. just about how I look. This body image yeah. can mean so much more instead of just like, this is what you look like physically. Love that. That feels like a really great entry point into, um, just defining like what, what is body image, maybe bring us into the layers of how you kind of conceptualize and define body image on its surface. Like most people would define body image as how we perceive ourselves and our bodies physically. I think as we do work around body image, we bring in a lot more than just the physical. Um, but mm -hmm. I think most people's understanding of body image and kind of society definition of body image mm -hmm. is, is very much physical. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, I think that diet culture, the media plays a big role in that. They kind of tell us like, this is the ideal body. Like these are the things that you should be doing. And I think that that really kind of trickles down to the everyday person being like, okay, like this is what my body's supposed to look like. Yeah. Um, so I think that that plays a big role. I also think the, the culture that we're in plays a big role. So, you know, based on our cultural background, I think different things are valued, different things are idealized. Mm -hmm. Um, because if we look at it, like depending on your own cultural background, like different things are kind of glorified. So I think that those are the biggest contributing factors to like, what kind of makes up body image on the surface, kind of what is the standard and then kind of how mm -hmm. we perceive ourselves based on that standard. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you feel like, or how do you see that trickling down into other kind of perceptions of self and the things that are coming to my mind right now are like worthiness or like good enoughness mm -hmm. or, you know, lovability, um, yeah. like what people consider like is, is beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, much like diet culture world, like it's very black and white. So it's like, if I look like this, if my body looks like this, if I can achieve this, I'm good. I'm worthy. I'm lovable. Mm -hmm. I'm beautiful. And if I can't, something's wrong with me. Yeah. Like I'm doing something wrong. I'm the problem. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That feels so important that, that like internalized, mm -hmm. like I'm, it's shame, right? Internalized shame of like, there's something wrong with me. I'm the problem. I'm bad. I'm not good. All of those things. When in reality, it's just these really, really impossible standards that were held up against that really no one even looks like. Yeah. So 
on the other side of this, so there's there's body image, right? And struggles with body image. I know in, in our practice, a lot of folks that are, you know, working with the therapists on our team are are working on things around body image. And I think underneath of that is also, you know, body dysmorphia. So I'm curious if you can talk some about body dysmorphia, about, you know, what, what is body dysmorphia? Um, it is like a, a formal diagnosis. Um, and what are some of the ways that it, it shows up for people? If someone's wondering, like, do I struggle with body dysmorphia? Like, what are some symptoms that they might experience around that? So I think, and, and I've heard a lot, body image struggles and body dysmorphia kind of used interchangeably, but they're, uh-huh. they're definitely very different. Yeah. Um, so body dysmorphia, like you were saying, it is a formal diagnosis. So you can be diagnosed by like a doctor, a therapist, a, a psychologist, psychiatrist, but it, it kind of falls more on almost like the obsessive end of things. Mm-hmm. So normally people with body dysmorphia are very, very preoccupied with what they look mm-hmm. like. And that mm-hmm. can look like spending hours, you know, focused on their appearance, what they're wearing. A lot of times there's a fixation on a body part. So it's like, Mm -hmm. I'm focusing on my nose or I'm focusing on my arms or I'm focusing on, and and that can change. A lot of times it does change. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but I think one of the, the keys there is how pervasive that is in their, Mm -hmm. in their daily life. Like it, it really takes up a lot of time. And a lot of times what they're focused in on is something that to another person probably wouldn't be noticeable at all. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's very Mm -hmm. much this, this idea that this thing is very, very wrong, or this thing is very, very noticeable when, Mm -hmm. you know, people are around them probably aren't noticing it at all. I know the impact of that is really great for people Mm -hmm. who are struggling with um, body dysmorphia and dysmorphic kind of tendencies, Mm -hmm. uh, how it pulls people Mm -hmm. out of their lives and out of relationships, out of connection with themselves and other people. What are, what are some of the, I guess, some of the side effects we'll say the side effects or the, the results of really struggling very deeply with body dysmorphia. So I think that isolation piece is huge, pulling out of relationships, saying no to, you know, connecting with others, being in social situations, because there is this fear that, well, I'm so preoccupied about this, this perceived flaw, like other people have to be as well. And Uh, then even bringing in that idea of worthiness, you know, how, how could people like me? How could I be lovable with Mm. this thing? When in reality, you know, people aren't, people aren't noticing this, people aren't Mm -hmm. paying attention to this. There's, there's a big fear that people are paying so much attention to how I look or this thing that I'm worried about. So that I think that isolation piece is huge. A lot of time spent, like I was saying, like body checking, looking Mm -hmm. in the mirror, getting Mm -hmm. ready can be really, really difficult. There's a lot of attempts to, to hide the flaw. So it's whether that's through makeup, clothing, um, I think sometimes to the extreme, there are like cosmetic procedures to try to, mm-hmm. to change your body, working out, like trying to, to change the shape of your body in that way. I, I, yeah, I think, you know, comparison is another big mm-hmm. one, like constantly trying to figure out like, what do I look like? Like, can I compare uh-huh. myself to someone else? Can I compare myself to how I look in the mirror? Can I compare myself to photos? There's comparison is a big Mm -hmm. part of it as well, Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Even comparing, right. Like a previous version of yourself to the current version of yourself Mm -hmm. and getting kind of stuck Mm -hmm. in that loop of, of looking and longing and what can I do to get Mm -hmm. back there or to change that, or this is how I really look and which can lead to more body checking and just the cycle goes and goes and goes and goes. Obviously people who struggle with body image can struggle with maybe dysmorphic tendencies, but someone who's Mm -hmm. really, you know, struggling with body dysmorphia, all of those things that you shared will probably maybe show up in different ways. Of course, everyone's different, Um, but the Mm -hmm. preoccupation and the body checking and the social isolation and just like the anxiety, it feels like the anxiety and the depression that can kind of come alongside of it feel so Mm -hmm. big. And I think that's, that's the big difference there. Like, yes, people who struggle with body image can definitely have these tendencies. But I think the the big difference there is just the intensity of mm-hmm. how it's felt and, and the time spent yeah. on focusing on, on some of these 
insecurities. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not just, you know, I had a fleeting thought or I I had a bad day. I had a bad moment. Like it's, it's very all consuming to the point that some people it's, it's hard to even leave their home. Absolutely. And I, you know, what you said earlier about, you know, folks, when you're, you're out and about, the people that you're with are, are likely not noticing whatever it is that you're that you're focusing on. And it feels important to just kind of name that, you know, that doesn't mean that you're like wrong or, you know, there's something wrong with you for thinking that mm-hmm. other people are going to notice this and all that comes along with that. I think what it does is it points to just like the pain and the suffering yeah. and the insecurity and that like there are needs there. Sure, maybe we don't know what they are in the here and now, but there are needs there that like this part of you, this body dysmorphic part is like trying to meet and trying to protect you from or shield you from. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's definitely. And that's one of the things that I think is so hurtful. Like a lot of times people do brush it off. It's like, oh, well, it's in your head or like it's a vanity uh-huh. issue. Like get over it. And it's, uh-huh. Yeah, and it's not. Like it's very real and it's it's mm-hmm. very, it's so hard to go through. And I think you're right. I think it is that need and tying it back to this idea of like body image and worthiness and lovability. Like a lot of times it is, I, I think that fear of like, if people are noticing this, hmm. what are they going to think about me? Right. Right. Am I lovable? Am I worthy? Mm -hmm. Like, am I safe to operate or function in the world just as I am? And for a lot of people, it doesn't feel that way. Mm -hmm. Right. And if if people notice this, what does that mean for me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That feels so important to validate that. Like, no, Mm -hmm. it's not wrong or bad. Like it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So then it, with body dysmorphia and even just general body image struggles, the clashing of eating disorders and disordered eating, let's kind of go there. That's a big yeah. one, but let's go there it as is. best no, we can. It is. it is. Absolutely. Two big things stand out to me there about how these things intersect. So I think control is a big piece here. And I, I think more on like the body dysmorphia side, it's, it's a way to change your body. Mm. Um, so it's, it's this idea of, I don't like this, you know, I'm fixated on this. I, I'm afraid that people are going to think poorly of me because of whatever it is about my body. Like, what can I do to change my body? Mm-hmm. And sometimes that is, you know, maybe I'm going to work out excessively or I'm going to control what I eat, when I eat, how much I eat. I I think that that's really where those things intersect. This idea Mm -hmm. of this is a way to change my body, but it's also a way to feel in control. Yeah. When things feel really out of control. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And then if you can change your body, then you may reach that like lovability, worthiness, safety, right? Mm -hmm. To operate in the world freely. And I think the question that I always think of is like, when is enough enough? Like, is there actually an enough? Or does it keep shape shifting and morphing? And unfortunately, I think it normally does mm-hmm. keep shifting. Yeah, totally. Because Which keeps not, people it's stuck. Not actually, yeah, it's not actually about our bodies at the end of the day. It's, yeah. it's about these things underneath. You know, am I lovable? Am I worthy? Am I safe to be my authentic self? Mm-hmm. And, and we kind of put that on our bodies. Like, well, if I look a certain way, I can be. Mm-hmm. And then when our bodies change, it's it's this kind of very scary moment of like, well, I, I changed things, but like, I still don't feel like this. So, so maybe it wasn't enough. Right. And then we end up in that cycle. Yeah. Yeah. The cycle that's so exhausting and draining. When we, when we think about the cycle, of all of this, what, what are some ways that you see out of this cycle of, of behaviors, of thoughts, of self-beliefs, again, like another big one, but what are some things that come to mind when you think of like strategies to exit the cycle or strategies to be with body dysmorphia or work with body image? So I think awareness of it is, is kind of the first big piece. Like it's, it's going to be hard to work on these things if you don't understand 
what's going on. So, so mm-hmm. having an awareness of it, talking about it, whether that's with a, a loved one, a, a support person, a professional, I, I think that that is always the best first step. And, and ideally a professional who really understands what's going on because yeah. there are unfortunately those people out there that say, oh, it's in your head or like you're, it's a vanity thing or, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's very shaming. So I think working mm-hmm. with someone who gets it is, is really important in finding ways out of that cycle. Because if, if we just kind of meet it with more shame, mm-hmm. we're going to stay stuck. Right. Um, yeah. We're going to like deepen it. And I'm thinking about like the piling of shame yeah. and how like the oppressiveness yeah. of that just keeps us like cycling through the same things just with more shame. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So that I've, I I think is a really important first step. More concretely, I think that there are things that we can try to avoid. So mm-hmm. if you're noticing that you're body checking a lot, like, can we try to cut down on, on the amount of body checking? Like, is there something else that would feel right to do in that moment instead? Like, do we need some affirmations? Do we need some sticky notes on the mirror? Like anything that might work for you to try to take a step back from that and be like, okay, is this, is it serving me? Is this helping me? Or is this, how is this making me feel? And if Mm -hmm. this isn't making me feel good, is there something else that I can do that, that might meet my needs right now in a, in a different way that feels more compassionate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I think doing some of those concrete things absolutely is helpful. Connecting with others is is Mm -hmm. big because this is so isolating. I think really making that point to connect with your supports is really important as you Mm -hmm. you work your way out of the cycle. Definitely. And I'm I'm thinking of that, like minimizing of body checking. I think you're right. That feels so important. And and also like very hard for people of like, when you have these rituals of like, okay, I go to the mirror and I turn this way and I turn that way and I feel this and I look at this and I zoom in on this, right? It can become these really deep and extensive rituals to engage oh, yeah. in. Again, that, that can feel like deeply regulating in some ways, right? Yeah. And so to start to, to work with some of those rituals in ways that feel okay for you, I don't think anyone in the practice is going to be like, let's smash the ritual and just, you know, like see what happens, you know, that feels really dysregulating. Even talking about it, that's really, yeah. Yeah. It's different for everybody. Like there are different Mm -hmm. things that are going to feel right for different people. Right. So we just have to figure out what those things are. Absolutely. And maybe it's setting a timer or changing up the order of your ritual and seeing what happens Mm -hmm. or like allowing yourself to go to town for five minutes and then counter that five minutes with something that's deeply self-caring. And I think, you know, you're right. uh, When we did a a recent event called Horsham Day, where our office is located, we had a mirror, a body affirmation mirror where people could write affirmations in a Sharpie or a dry erase marker, just to remind people that like, you're so much more than your body. Can you look in this mirror with a different lens, with a different pair of glasses, other than the dysmorphic or shameful glasses that people, you know, can just go like default to? I think that's a really important second step there. Mm -hmm. So like, yes, we can do, you know, disrupt the ritual, Mm -hmm. do affirmations, things like that. I think the second step there is, can we expand on what body image means? You know, can Mm -hmm. we take it past this just very physical thing? And can Mm -hmm. we bring in more of, you know, my, my body is just kind of the vessel that contains Mm -hmm. who I am as a person, Mm -hmm. like who am I as a person? What are my values? What are my interest what makes me me can i start to focus on those things and and kind of prioritize those things as Mm -hmm. the things that make me who i am and and give me worthiness give me kind of this innate lovability not Mm -hmm. how i look yeah yeah that shift from looking at your body to 
being in your body. So like body image versus embodiment. I think that's a great point of, yeah. of finding ways. And I think this is where like working with a therapist can be really helpful or someone that you trust and care about and has lots of wisdom, but how to shift from that like external view to the internal knowing and feeling and being so much harder than just saying it, just to say that, right? Like to say that it's like lovely and it's so well, hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I think another piece that's really hard. There's a lot of acceptance work, I think, as well around maybe recognizing, do any of us know what we look like? Like, I uh -huh. think that that's a big question that can come uh -huh. up in this work. If uh -huh. I can just figure out what I look like, like, I'll feel okay. Like, I won't yeah. feel so anxious. These things will get better. And I, I've seen it in clients and I've seen it with myself, like this acceptance piece of we're, we're not going to know that. Yeah. And that's okay. Because at the end of the day, that's not what makes me hmm. important. That's not what makes me worthy. It's these, these things within me. Yeah, definitely. So, again, another thing that's like much easier to say than uh -huh. kind of wrap your, your head around and actually practice. But I think that that's mm -hmm. another really important piece there as well. Yeah. And when you just said the word practice, that it stands out so much because remembering for everyone, right? For us as humans in the world, like body image body stuff, like it's this lifelong journey really. And it's these practices mm -hmm. that bring you back to yourself. Like we're all going to have body image triggers because we live in a really shitty culture, right? There's lots of expectations, lots of norms, quote unquote. And it's like, how can we come back to the practice? How can we come mm -hmm. back to embodiment? How can we accept that? Even accepting that you don't like your body to accept that and not deepen into shame because you think you should like your body, right? That can be so altering for your experience in the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, mm -hmm. I always like to stress that with clients because I think it can, it can be such a frustrating point to get stuck at because, you know, we hear all these things about like body positivity and it's like, mm -hmm. I have to love my body all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times clients and like, I've been there as well, you get so frustrated because it's like, I'm doing this work, but like, I'm still having these thoughts. Mm -hmm. I don't like how this looks. I don't like how that looks. And it, it's mm -hmm. very much, well, I'm not making progress. And I always uh. like to point out you know, what you just said, like in the world that we live in, we're going to have triggers. We're going to mm -hmm. have days where we don't feel great about the way that we look. Mm -hmm. it's, it's learning. How can we respond to that? Like, how can yeah. we respond to that in, in a more compassionate way, instead of in a way, like you were saying, I feel shame. I have to change something. Something's wrong with me. I should be somewhat it, different it, in not. this journey. Like, those thoughts yeah. are, right. Right. Like those thoughts are very normal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I love that you pointed that out. Cause I, I think that that is something that, you know, we don't acknowledge enough that just because you have a thought like that, it doesn't mean that you're not making progress and then working on body image. Definitely. Are there any other tips or concrete tools that you have off the top of your head that could be supportive for someone who's, you know, tuning in or watching and thinking, ah, this is interesting. <laughs> Maybe I could try a little something. And of course, we're not your therapist, right? Like talk yeah. to your therapist. And like, yeah. there are some little yeah. tips and tools that you can take with you maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So talk to your therapist. <laughs> always. <laughs> always. Always first. Always. Yeah. Um, I, I think I going on the idea of embodiment, because I think like embodiment is such a big part of this work. Can we bring in some mindfulness? Can we bring in mm. some grounding? Like, can mm. we do a body scan and, mm -hmm. and just kind of see you know, what, what's coming up? Like, what am I feeling? Can we do something mindful? Like go for a mindful walk, listen mm -hmm. to some music, see how that feels in our body. Can we do mm -hmm. some gentle stretching, yoga, things like that, just to, to really start to understand, like, this is how my body feels. And like, I'm, I'm able mm -hmm. to kind of tune into that instead of mm -hmm. having this situation where it's like me against my body. How can I mm -hmm. learn how to work with my body? And there are yeah. ways to, to start to do that. Hmm. Yeah. And when you said that, I thought of a poet and I'd have to look up the exact quote that they said, cause I can't totally remember it, but it was something along the lines of, can you look in the mirror 
and gaze back at yourself. And mm-hmm. can that like just be enough? I don't know why that popped into my head as you were saying that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to look that up and put it in the show notes. But it mm-hmm. feels important to be able to like gaze back at yourself with acknowledgement and what it feels like to be on the other side of that, mm-hmm. tapping into mm-hmm. all all that swirling inside, or maybe it's not swirling. I don't know. Everyone's different, but that just kind yeah. of popped into my my head when you're, when you're sharing that. I think sometimes yeah. like the term embodiment work, like it sounds intimidating sometimes. Mm-hmm. And like, it is like, there's a lot of work there, but I think sometimes acknowledging like, yes, embodiment work is very, very important when working with body image, body dysmorphia, but there are these ways to kind of get started with that, but to kind yeah. of tune in more, whether that is, you know, through something mindful, something grounding. So I I always kind of recommend that as well. Like what's something easy to just start to get you in touch with your body. Yeah. Like a tiptoe in, you don't have to stay there, right? You don't have to stay there, but maybe this like bid for relationship can be enough. And something, you know, make it enjoyable, make it as not intimidating as possible. So if that's like, I just want to kind of sit you know, do a, do a short meditation Mm -hmm. or I want to like listen to music and like dance and like move my body in that way and see how it feels. Or Mm -hmm. I want to go for a walk and focus on what I can hear, like something like that, that, that just Mm -hmm. feels safe, comforting, but at the Mm -hmm. same time is still getting us connected. And I, I think my favorite kind of concrete tool, if, if it works for you is affirmations. Um, Mm -hmm. just, just being able to kind of recenter, re re reground in that way of just having an affirmation that feels good and put it up if you need to, you know, if that, if that feels helpful, if there's a mirror that you, you tend to body check in or an area or something like that, like put your affirmations up to Mm -hmm. really remind yourself I'm more than this. I'm more than just my body. Yeah. And if you're in need of some affirmations, shameless plug, we do a real once per week of, (laughs) of body affirmations where, you know, everyone in every therapist in the practice shares a body affirmation that, like I said, we post once per week. So, so head over to Instagram and check that out. There's a, what's it called? A highlight in the Instagram profile with all of the body affirmation reels that we've done so far. So there's some really like just nice places to start if you're interested in getting curious about body affirmations and what lands and what doesn't land. Well, thank you so much, Emily. These are, there's a really helpful tools and little tips and food for thought, I think for, for anyone who's on this journey of body image work, which I think is most people. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, of course. It was, it was great chatting. Okay, everybody, we will be back next week with another episode with Casey. And if you're looking for body image support, eating disorder support, or or trauma treatment, head over to our website at www.reclaimtherapy.org. Check us out and let us know if you have any questions. See you later. 